What does it mean when your kneecaps point inward? Good morning, happy Friday. I have Neuro Coffee in hand and it is perfect. All right, great week. Um, great call yesterday morning on the Coffee and Coaches Conference call. If you weren't there, you missed out on a, on a fun one. We had a great time for about two hours yesterday, just going back and forth. So please join us uh, next Thursday, 6 a.m., bring your coffee and just kick back and enjoy or participate. Um, today's Q&A is with Johnny. Johnny is a chiropractic student, and he had um, a couple of uh, presentations with, with, with patients that he's working with that he wasn't wasn't quite understanding and it has to do with how the knees get oriented inward and um, we took this from the archetype and, and basically deconstructed it um, Johnny and I went back and forth on email a little bit after this call and he's on point he's got it all figured out he understands what his interventions are, are, are going to be this is a very common presentation that I think gets misunderstood as to what is changeable and, and I think a lot of people see this representation, they don't think that they can make a change on it, and, and you actually can. So I, I hope it's going to be useful for many people. So thank you, Johnny, for your participation. Um, if you would like to participate in a 15-minute um, consultation, then you just go to askbillhartman at gmail.com, askbillhartman at gmail.com, and we will take care of you there. Um, we, we've got a few more questions to go through, so, so please be patient if you do request one. And we will see you next week. Johnny, what's your question? All right. So I've seen a couple of clients in a uh, clinic. I'm doing an internship for chiropractic school. Oh, okay. Great. Which school? Logan University. Okay. Yep. I'm familiar. Yep. Nice. So I have a couple. So narrow <laughs> ISA. Yep. High arch in the foot. Yep. Relative tibial external rotation. Yep. So they're so it's like their patellas are pointing a little bit more medial if so their feet are pointing. Squinting? Do they call them squinting patella? I don't know what they call it. <laughs> so they look like eyeballs that are squinting, so they go they go down and in. Oh, yeah. nice. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I haven't heard that term yet. <laughs> okay. Now you do. You yeah. <laughs> okay. I don't know if insurance right. will cover that. <laughs> um, I doubt it. <laughs> So the with the feet pointing forward, the knees are the knees are look like they're squinting. The pedals yeah, are going to squint. I'm with you, man. So my question is, if the goal is to increase dorsiflexion pronation, how I guess my first question should be, what exactly is going on, so I can understand how to address it. Okay. okay. Um, the last thing I'll add is, it does seem like distal tibia is a little bit more internally rotated than the proximal. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. Great description. Great description. So let's, so let's think this through from, from foundational archetype to the representation that you have now. Okay. So if I, if I start with my narrow ISA archetype, my bias is towards external rotation. So I would have a situation where, see, I, I knew you were going to ask about the pubs. <laughs> you're, like, you're like the fourth call today. So I, I, I've been sitting with the pubs on. So I'm going to have this counter mutated relative ER position here. You see that? Okay. Mm -hmm. This is going to retrovert the, the acetabulum. So I'm going to be biased towards ER. Okay. Now you, what you've described though at the knee, it looks like the, the patella is in a position of IR and then you've got relative tibial ER. Okay. And then you said, this is key element. You go, but the distal tibia looks like it's in IR. So here's what you got going on. You've got ER at the hip, you've got IR at the knee, you've got ER at the knee, IR at the ankle, okay? This is huge, this is huge, okay? Yeah. So if I am biased towards external rotation, right? What that means is I've got the yielding action on the posterior side, which should hold me backwards, right? It should keep me back towards my heels. Right. And then it should also lift my arch away from the ground. So, so think about this though. If I'm walking and I have to go through the middle propulsive phase, which is IR, and I'm biased towards ER, and my pelvic position is biased towards ER, how am I going to put force into the ground? I have to create a compensation 
to okay. produce that for us. Okay. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take my ER pelvis and I'm going to tip it forward. I'm going to orient it because if I anteriorly orient the pelvis, I can put more force into the ground without changing anything. Gotcha. Okay. okay. Traditional extension lumbar extension or whatever extension we're going to talk about is internal rotation. It, it's forced into the ground, right? Now, mm -hmm. if I am, if I am a, a, a narrow ISA bias towards counter nutation, that's actually a lumbar flexion though, isn't it? Okay. Yeah. Lumbar flexion would follow the counter nutation, which means that I'm probably going to go above that level and I'm going to, I'm going to use some form of lower thoracic strategy to tip the pelvis forward from above. And now that's how I get my anterior orientation. You see it? Okay. Yeah. Okay? yeah. Now, hang on. If I'm using a lower thorax to create the internal rotation, I'm going to use a posterior lower pelvis strategy in exactly the same way, which is going to produce ER at the proximal femur. Okay. So I got hip ER, no hip IR. Okay, Correct. you follow? Yes. So my IR, so so far, so far, my IR is coming from above the lumbar spine and below the level of the trochanter. And not in the actual hip joint. Uh -uh. Uh -uh. Okay. So I gotta go, I gotta go below, like so, so as I go down from the pelvis, that's where the IR is gonna come from. I have to twist inward, inward somewhere. I have to go in, right? So as I as I go below the level of the trochanter, so that so my I got that ER compression right at that trochanter that's pushing it forward. There's my no IRs. But if I go below that, there, there's no muscle that twists the 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 femur like the glute does, right? Mm -hmm. And so now I can start to turn that inward. So I take my my big vastus lateralis and I twist the femur. And I turn the femur inward, right? And that's how you get the patella to point in. That's how I get my little squinty patellas, right? I turn them inward with the femur. But I got a knee joint that I'm going to hit right below the femur. I don't have the same force applied. So it's going to be in a relative position of ER. You see it? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but I still got to get force into the ground. So what am I going to do? Well, I'm going to take the deep posterior compartment of the lower leg and I'm going to concentrically orient it. And that's going to create an okay. ER position of the foot relative to an IR position of the tibia. So you see how I get this relative position change? It goes ER, IR, ER, IR, ER, IR. Could you repeat? Yeah, I do. Could you repeat the, the last one with the lower posterior tibial compartment? Yeah. Yeah. So you've got an ER foot, right? You've got an arch. Yeah, that, that means so. So whether we're late or whether we're early, it means you've got concentric orientation that's holding that arch up. Right. Gotcha. Where do those yeah. muscles come from? Posterior lower. Do you deep posterior compartment of the lower leg? Right. Okay. Yeah. But, and the, well, but where are they attached, Johnny? Test question. Come on, you're a student. Where are they attached? Are they attached to the medial aspect of the tibia or the lateral aspect of the tibia and the fibula? The, uh, the latter. Yeah. So, so which way are they going to twist the, the proximal tibia? Laterally. Yes. ER. Okay. Yeah. There you go. So you got to, but if everything's twisted in the ER, I still need to produce IR. So what can I do? Well, that, oh, I know. I'll, just twist the bejesus, I'll just twist the bejesus out of the tibia. Wow. Actually. So there, and there's no yeah. particular muscles or muscle groups that would do that or is that just the forces coming back up through the body it is the muscles that are doing that that are re in, internally rotating the distal tibia well i got i so i have i have force into the ground like, like you got to remember that i've got force into the ground right mm -hmm. yeah so but i have a foot position that's also going to going to create a twist as well you understand of the well, the foot. My I guess my confusion is that the foot is pointing out. Yep. Then and where's then we the have. Pelvis? Where's the pelvis over the foot? Where is the pelvis over the foot? It can't. So I can tell you that this person is in late propulsion. 
Okay. You know why? Because the center of gravity has to be over the foot to get force into the ground. Otherwise, I'm in early and I'm falling backwards. Okay. You see it? Kai, that'll be one I have to re-listen to, but I'm all Stand up. Stand up. Let's do this. <laughs> okay. Put your right foot forward. Okay. Early propulsion. Got it? Yep. Okay. Now, um, step forward with your left foot, but don't shift your weight onto it yet. Step forward with your left foot. Don't put your weight on it. Stay back on your right heel. Okay. Now, I want you to, to barely pick up your, your left foot. So it's just touching the floor, but it has no weight on it. And then I want you to get your weight over your right foot. So get over the middle of the foot. Now, you feel the weight go down and in? On the right? Yes, sir. Yes. There you go. That's why you got the twist. Okay. <laughs> oh, man. That's right. <laughs> all we're doing, all we're doing here is playing games with center of gravity, right? Yeah. Maintaining a, a space to move into and producing force into the ground. So you have to have both strategies, like under every circumstance, anybody that can move through space is, is creating external rotations and internal rotations. It just might not be at the joint. That's yeah. That's where it gets tricky is <laughs> when the bones start to. Yeah. To... Yeah. It kind of sucks, but think about it. It's like what bone doesn't change shape. Right. None of them. They all do. Right. Right. Um, so as far as addressing this, I would assume starting, uh, where would you start? What? What? Okay. So, so you've got, you've got internal force management and you've got external force management. Which one uh, do you think you have to control first? Probably internal. There you go. So that's the first shape that you need to reacquire. Okay. okay. So would you address the posterior lower thoracic compression before, or would you go, I'm sorry, to finish the question first, or would you go from the ground up? Or could you do either, just depending on how the patient responds? So, so some of that is going to be, be the, the latter portion of your response, right? It's going to depend on the individual. Some, some of it is going to be you're like, you're, some people are going to be better at accessing it from the ground up. Some people are going to be better, but the, but the, the, the general representation is that if you change one of them, they all change to a degree, right? That's the goal. And, mm -hmm. and that's why we use these representations. So, so again, um, uh, my answer is yes, that's what you do. <laughs> right. <laughs> it's a, it's like a gray, dirty answer, you know, but, but yeah. the problem is, is, is that number one, as long as you understand the representation that, that you have in front of you, it just becomes the experiment as to, okay, which one is more meaningful to this person? All right. Which one do they have better access to? But I would encourage you to look at this from the axial skeletal position first, because that's what controls the internal forces, which you have to manage no matter what. You can create, here you go. You can create compensatory strategies that actually make people feel better, but do not restore the relative motions that you're after. If, okay. I, give you, if I give you a strong IR strategy, that's more force into the ground right? And that might actually alleviate some of the stress that people are feeling where, where, when they come in complaining of pain, because it, it distributes the force that, that they're using to somewhere else. And that, okay. that feels good, right? Somebody walks in with like a left-sided low back pain, right? And, and they're using, they're, let's just say that you, they're using like a left extended spine and they come in, they say it hurts right here. They, they point to their left low back and you go, oh, you're just driving a ton of IR there. Well, let's drive a ton of IR with a forward head. Cool. You just alleviated the, the <laughs> need to use all the, and this happens, this does happen, right? Yeah. You just took away the need to put all the IR in one place. You just distributed it, which is kind of what we want to do in the first place, right? but it's still not good relative motion recapture, 
right? But you took the stress away and somebody goes, wow, Johnny, you're like the best ever, right? And then you're, you're like kicking yourself going, I know, but it didn't get what I wanted because I didn't get the ERs back, right? And so, so again, it's like, but it might provide you an opportunity then to access something that they were protecting themselves against. And now you go after that, that, that ER relative motion that you're going to need to create space to move in. Okay. Does that help you? Yes, it does. I'm definitely gonna have to come back and rewatch this, but that's totally okay. I'm gonna post it up for the whole world to see, John- Johnny. You're gonna be famous. Awesome, awesome. That's <laughs> <why>. <laughs> um, right. How much time do we have left? You have, you have three seconds. Here, listen. Here it goes. <laughs> awesome.